Welcome, my name is Maria and I'm a project leader in Epsilon and today I'll be talking about conductive effective user tests. I would like to start with telling you why I believe this topic is important and also what I actually mean by user tests and then I'll follow up with some good practices. Um, I think that including users into the development process is a game changer because in the end we are building a solution for them uh, and they will decide if it is a success. Uh, they will decide if this is helpful for them and intuitive to use. And when I'm talking about user tests, uh, I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one meetings that I have with the users when we already have something that we would like to share. Uh, it doesn't need to be a final solution. It can be, for example, a POC. And uh, this meeting usually consists of three parts. Uh, first, I'm asking the user about his or her daily work. Uh, then I'm asking the user to perform actions in the application and I'm observing it. And then I'm gathering uh, general feedback from the users. Uh, now I will follow up with some good practices. Uh, first, try to not wait until the product is good enough. Uh, I know it can be very hard to share something that you feel is not perfect and you see a lot of things you could improve, uh, but it is worth it because otherwise you can spend a lot of time developing something which won't be used because of some assumptions that you made at the beginning. Uh, I would even go a bit further. Uh, I think that sometimes it's good to dedicate time uh, to create a POC and showcase the POC to the users to gather early feedback. Uh, and I think that Shiny is a great tool to create such POCs because of how fast you can develop in it. And I would like to share a case study with you. Uh, some time ago, a client came to us and asked us to uh, create quite complex uh, React Python application. Uh, and at the end, we decided to start with a POC uh, in Shiny to validate his idea first. And uh, we had only two weeks to create this POC. And I have to tell you that it exceeded my expectations for sure, because we were able to not only create um, good looking application with the core functionality implemented, but also we were able to mock a lot of other functionalities. Uh, and it allowed us to show this to the user and gather feedback. And we learned a lot of things that we needed to change uh, in the final design. Uh, and later on, when we were implementing uh, the application in React Python, we could already implement those changes. And otherwise, we would need to wait uh, a few months at least to gather this feedback and then probably rewrite a significant part of the code. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you that when you have uh, a situation that you know that your final solution is quite complex and it will take some time, just try to start with the POC with a lot of functionalities mocked and already start gathering feedback from the users. Next three points uh, will be mostly about the second point uh, of the interview. So the time when um, the user is interacting with the application and we're observing it. Uh, so first, try to limit the explanation to the minimum. I know it can be hard sometimes when you see this user struggling, uh, but uh, those are the situations that you should observe and uh, note down and make sure uh, that you know how to avoid them in the future, how to change the UI or implement some changes uh, in the features uh, in the application. Uh, another point will be to ask the user to perform business actions. Uh, so try to avoid uh, questions like, could you go to the right top corner and change the value in the dropdown to Poland? It is much better to ask a question like, could you please try to display a data for Poland? Because then you know if it is easy for the user to find this drop down and also to filter on Poland, for example. And you can implement some changes if it's not. Uh, then uh, ask the user to speak aloud about their thinking process and expectations, because only then you can truly understand what is happening. Uh, as an example, a uh, user can open a tab and he can tell you that, oh, I opened this tab because I expected some advanced charts here, uh, but I can only see a table uh, which is not very helpful for me. And now you know that you need to change something. You can change the tab name or add this advanced uh, charts if needed. And the last part uh, is about gathering feedback. So try to ask open, not leading questions. So try to avoid questions like yes or not, and try to not lead the user uh, with your question. So the worst example would be starting with a question like, uh, don't you think that this, is so, this solution is great and it will really help us? Because then it will be very difficult for the user to um, give you some constructive feedback and criticize uh, the solution. Uh, that's all I would like to share today. Thank you so much for joining me and see you in the Q&A session. Thank you, goodbye.